jam-packed with beautiful landmarks and intriguing museums, it can be difficult to prioritize what to do, where to eat, and how to get around the bustling city of Washington, D.C. Now, David and I are in town for a special Bridgerton Kazoma event, and we can't wait to get down in our ball gowns. Until then, we wanted to show you guys around the U.S. Capitol and all the beautiful historic sites and monuments that there are to see here. We'll also have a D.C. local showing us around some of D.C.'s historic neighborhoods. So stay tuned as we share our best tips on 20 things to do in D.C., how to get around, and where to eat. All in this episode of Lucas World Travel. Now on our first full day in DC, we headed to the National Mall to see all of the historic sites DC is best known for. Now the Washington Monument honors our first president, George Washington. And when it was built back in 1884, it was the tallest structure in the world. Not so much anymore now, but it's still a wonderful reminder of how this country got started with its first president. You actually can go inside of it for free if you get here early enough. They start releasing tickets for the day at 8.45 a.m. So you really have to be here bright and early if you want to get one for yourself. We're going to come back tomorrow and try. So now we're heading to the President's House, the White House. At 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, you will find the most famous house in the United States, the White House. And we made it to Pennsylvania oh, Avenue so with the White House yeah. right behind us. Ah -ha. It's always so exciting. Yeah. And naturally, you'll see yeah. people protesting as well here. Now it is possible to tour the inside of the White House and the Capitol building for free. You just have to email your congressman or your embassy at least three weeks in advance of your visit. Now for food by the White House, you want to head to 1700 Pennsylvania Avenue. There you'll be able to eat at places like Chop for Salad, there's a Starbucks, there's an immigrant food place. So definitely check out this street because if you go toward the National Mall, not much food options for you other than food trucks. And if you can get metered parking, it's only like $2.30 per hour. So very affordable meter parking if you can find it. However, to park in a garage is gonna be about $22 per day. So now we're at the World War II Memorial. So from the World War II Memorial, you get great views of the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. So this is a great place to see everything all at once in the National Mall. Now at the end of World War II, the troops celebrated in the fountains of Europe. So in honor of that, they allow you to sit at the fountain with your feet in the water. Although you can't walk or stand through the fountain at all. It's a really nice way to get in touch with that moment in history. So another thing you want to keep in mind is that the distances of the National Mall are immense. We're talking a 15 to 20 minute walk between the monuments. So wear some comfortable shoes because you will be walking. They also have um, bike stations, so if you prefer to rent a bicycle, you can do that as well. Yeah, they have the bird scooter things, the electric scooters. But if you're walking like we're walking, plan for kind of an all-day event, depending on how many of the monuments you want to see in one day. Next up is the Lincoln Memorial, which has a gigantic but lovely sculpture of a seated Lincoln and the Gettysburg Address etched on the wall. But there's many powerful memorials here, including the Vietnam Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, complete with some powerful quotes. And it says, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. Very nice symbolism there. 
And it has some of my favorite quotes, like, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Beautiful. Next, we continued our walk around the Potomac to the Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial, who reminds us that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And beautiful quotes like the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. FDR is one of the few presidents who had a third term. This man even had a fourth term. He must have died during his fourth term though. So on your way to the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, you can see this Pagoda of Friendship, which was a gift um, from Japan to the US. Another thing you can try is taking a pedal boat out on the Potomac, which is a fun way to enjoy all the DC views from the water. But we ended our first day in DC at the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. Now this morning we decided to take the metro so we can see if it's more convenient to take public transportation than to sit in traffic and pay to park. Let's see what it's like. way to get around DC. But you do have to pay two dollars for a metro card. So yesterday we walked over 16,000 footsteps walking outside of the monuments. But today we're going inside a few. Let's show you what the Washington Monument is like. This is the line at 835. We're able to get nine o'clock tickets. Let's go! Naturally the best part of going to the top of the Washington Monument is the 360 view because the view at 550 feet is a spectacular one and this is the north side you can see the white house really good from here we got the east side and on this side you can see the capital very well I've been here many times, this was my first time up there, so that was really cool. The other thing I enjoyed was seeing the construction of how they built it, which is interesting. Now you can either book your tickets online at reservation.gov or you can get in line at 835. It's already 10 o'clock and they're already sold out of all the daily tickets, so you do want to get here early to try to get your free ticket. Next up, we're doing the African American Smithsonian Museum which is free to enter and filled with powerful stories from slavery to civil rights and exhibits about music and pop culture as well. This museum also has some of the best food on the National Mall, so definitely check out Sweet Home Cafe if you want some soul food while you're touring the mall. But if you'd like to get off the beaten path when you travel, then it's nice to experience some of DC's historic neighborhoods. And we were able to do just that. So now we're in the U Street Quarter with local expert, Tanisha Davis. She's a fellow YouTube friend. She has the channel Fun and Budget with Tanisha Davis. Definitely check it out for fun and learning how to budget that money for travel. I wanted to bring you here because this is my favorite part of DC. Because wow. this area used to be known as Washington's Black 
Broadway. Oh. This is where all the artists used to stay, where they would perform. This is where um, art and life just really thrived. Mm. Then we had that dark period of like the 80s, the 90s, you know, drugs and all of that right. stuff. Right. And it just really, this area just really fell apart. I moved to this area like 1997, mm. and what we see now is not what it's always been. This is where all of the prostitution, really? all of the dr drug dealing, you wow. fared for your life whenever I ended up <laughs> on the street. In 97? In 97. That wasn't long ago. Yeah, so this has been a total regentrification. But the beautiful part is, this is almost like a full circle moment. But now we're seeing it revital it's being revitalized again. Now that same house is like worth multiple millions. This area was first built up by slave encampments. Mm. The next neighborhood over is LaJoy Park, another area. But that area was a white only area. Mm. So they would actually have like, um, they made a gated ah. community and they had guards and everything because they really wanted to, it to appeal to white people and know that they were safe from the area that was next to it, which was known as, again, Black Broadway. Right here, we see we're coming up on Lincoln Theater. Uh -huh. Lincoln Theater actually closed in 1968 because okay. of the race riots after Dr. Martin Luther King was killed. Uh -huh. But next to Lincoln Theater is another DC landmark, Ben's Chili Bowl. Hmm. Have you guys been there? No, never heard Have of you it. Heard? You've never heard of Ben's Chili Bowl? No. No, oh. no, I've never heard of that. Now, Ben's Chili Bowl has been famous since 1958 for its half-smoked chili dog. But we wound up eating at Tanisha's favorite restaurant in the U Street neighborhood, Busboys and Poets, which was named in honor of Langston Hughes, who once worked as a busboy before becoming a famous poet. And this restaurant has a great vibe and such delicious food. Now, DC has so many great museums to explore. We spent maybe seven hours in the National African American Museum, so essentially all day, and we still didn't see everything. Um, but today, we are starting with the National Archives, where you can see the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Now, you can't take any photos or videos, so this is all just Google Images. But it's just cool to see these documents that were preserved from 1776. Very awesome. And for lunch by the National Archives, definitely check out the Rice Bar, which has some incredible Korean food. Just across the street from the National Archives is a sculpture park, which is filled with dozens of interesting and fun sculptures. It's part of the National Gallery of Art and is a quick way to take in some art while you're in DC. So now we're going into the National Museum of the American Indian. We found it so interesting how Native Americans would use these wampum belts to document their treaties with the U.S. government. And although the government would have written records, they would always forget to honor their treaties, while the Native Americans were able to remember everything with these belts. And they shared powerful wisdom. Like, when you act and speak, you must think of all of your relatives, known and unknown. You must also remember the plants, the animals, the living things, and the ancient ones. It was definitely a fascinating museum to explore in DC. Next up, we headed to the U.S. Botanical Gardens to see lovely species, both foreign and domestic. And of course, you should stop by the U.S. Capitol building because its iconic dome is stunning from all angles. Now our absolute favorite attraction in D.C. was the Library of Congress, which is the world's largest library. 
Its reading room will inspire you to take up a research project or two. And the ornate library is filled with sculptures, painted ceilings, and artwork that is gorgeous to see. And Thomas Jefferson's original library. This place is so beautiful, I was reluctant to leave. But that's DC for you, filled with fascinating places. After all of that, if you have any time left, check out the National Cathedral, simply because the Gothic architecture is lovely and the attached bishop's garden is peaceful and serene. Now you can also go inside the cathedral. I do believe tickets are currently $15 a person, but I think we're gonna pass going inside this time and just enjoy the beautiful garden and the exterior. Now really and truly, you can spend your whole time in Washington, D.C. in the National Mall. But if you'd like to see a beautiful historic neighborhood, you wanna to come to Georgetown. Now this neighborhood started in 1751 and is one of the most complete historic towns here in Washington, D.C. Uh, so it's nice to see all the lovely roll staff houses. Plus, this neighborhood predates everything you're seeing at the National Mall by about 40 years. So very interesting place to go. While in Georgetown, it's nice to check out the university, all the cute shops on M Street, and the Georgetown Park on the Potomac. And how nice, you can do a walking meditation in the park. From Georgetown to the iconic monuments and museums, Washington DC is a city filled with wonders that will fill you with awe and inspiration. And although the history shared is not always the brightest, the city shares its truth so that we can create the brightest future together. All right, world travelers, but that's our journey. Good luck in planning your own. And if you'd like even more travel tips from all around the world, please remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for even more tips from Lucas World Travel. Until next time, check out the best things to do in Detroit, Michigan on the right there. As always, thanks so much for watching and happy travel planning until next time.